This video is about helping you learn to navigate the keyboard better with a really simple practical approach to help you avoid getting lost and ultimately improve your chord playing. We're going to look at some common basic things that you should be practicing in your left hand and your right hand. There's going to be lots of helpful stuff throughout and then I want to show you one of the most useful inversion exercises so stay tuned for that. If you want to eventually gain some more fluency with chords, some freedom to play them in different ways and make them more interesting, more like the music that you're listening to, I can't emphasize enough how working on some foundational skills with chords is really gonna help. The more musical and distinctive things like playing patterns, using extra notes with chords, incorporating melodic ideas and riffs with chords, well, all that stuff is made much easier when you gain a bit of confidence moving around some of the more basic major and minor chord positions first. They will act like a framework for you and a structure on the layout of the keyboard to help you work from and find other things. Now, when we learn a new chord, I'm gonna use this D major as an example. We learn it in the most basic form first called root position. So it's just one of each note in order. But in music, those notes get used all over the piano. We spread them around in different ways between the hands. They're broken up into patterns and we need to try and get used to finding those chords in different places, recognizing them, recognizing chord structures in music. You know, when you've been teaching beginners a long time, well, it doesn't take you very long to realize that it's an obstacle in the way for a lot of people. They get very visually lost trying to find things, trying to find the notes when they're spread out in different positions. So a little tip for you is to, well, if you can visualize that chord once, right? You can visualize it twice. So picture the chord again. There's lots of ways we can work on this, but this is just helpful. Picture the chord again. So we've got two D majors. And then I like to think of this as a chord stream. I sometimes call it, it's a stream of the notes of a chord. Lots of the positions that we play, you can think of as being chunks of that stream. So the next in positions to practice are your basic inversion positions. So we're not gonna get into the theory of it here, but it's really simple. It's just those three notes in a different order. So if I play this chunk of the stream here, those three notes, then you can see I've got D, F sharp and A, and that's just become F sharp, A and D. So it's the same notes in a different order. This is a first inversion position. And notice how the root of the chord, the D, is the top note. That can help you find it. And if you look at the overall shape, if you compare it to the root position, which was more evenly spaced, this one now has a bigger gap at the top. And then if I do that again on the next chunk, I've got A, D and F sharp. It's just another rearrangement of the notes. And this is a second inversion position. The root is now in the middle, the D is in the middle of this one, and the bigger gap is on the bottom. And then I've got the first position I had just an octave higher, okay? So these are the basic positions that we should practice first because they give us one of each note, so we get a whole sense of the chord and we can easily reach them in one hand whilst we're doing some left hand stuff as well. But you can practice these in the left hand as well. Sometimes we play whole chord positions in the left hand in other situations. I did a whole video dedicated to memorizing the major and minor chord inversions as there's too much to go into again here. I really recommend watching that one after this video because it gets into a lot more detail to help you understand them and find each position straight away. And a lot of beginners tend to keep this kind of quite zoomed in view of the piano. So whenever they have to leap lower or higher, they get lost because they've only been looking at this area. Whereas if you keep a nice wide view at all times, it helps you, okay? And that works with all our basic major and minor chords. So if I did a D minor as well, we can just picture that chord stream. There's one root position and another. And then our basic inversion positions are the chunks, the three note chunks inside of that stream. Or the notes might be broken up into a pattern, which is often the harder things to recognize for people. But once you get familiar with these structures, 
it makes you see them everywhere in music and it's much easier to learn things remember when they're already a familiar part of your vocabulary. When you're playing a chord progression you want to make sure that you're not only using root positions to play the chord. If we did do that it might sound like this. Now there's nothing incorrect about that and it might make a good warm-up exercise to get familiar with the chords but if you only do that it can sound a little bit amateur sometimes and a little bit plonky and we don't create that nice fluid movement between chords that we do create when we use a mixture of positions and what we're focusing on is close moving positions so moving from one chord to the next a position that moves either up or down in the closest way that it can. And when we do that, it might sound a little smoother, more like this perhaps. And of course there's lots of possibilities. I could have started on a different position for that E minor and then I could go different places from there. And I'm playing the same chords there each time, I'm just moving through them differently and you see how big of an impact that can have on the music. So what we want to practice is gaining some command over these different places that we can go so that when we're deciding how to play some chords, that might be you're practicing and you're figuring out what you're doing, or it might be in real time if you're just looking at a chord chart, just, just trying to sit down and play or improvising with chords. You want to have these options. We want to have that command of those positions so we can, we're free to make those musical choices to go there in the moment. There's a couple of ways I like to practice this with students in lessons. You could use a chord progression for whatever song that you're working on, but I also like to practice the chords within a key. It's best to start off with C major, so you've got no black keys to contend with, and you can worry about that once you get the hang of this. So that would be the chords C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor. I don't tend to do this with the diminished chord in the major key so much, but you can if you like. So the way this works is you can just start on any chord in any inversion, doesn't matter. So let's just pick this A minor. And then at random, we're just going to um, pick a chord to go to next, and we're gonna pick a direction up or down to go to next. Like I say, this is more of a, a mechanical practice. So we can just go on and on and on picking random chords. We're not worried about making a nice chord progression at this stage. So you pick another chord to go to next. Now I would pick the chords for a student. But if you're doing this um, by yourself, you can just make one up. Pick a random chord, pick a random direction. So let's say we want to go up to an F major. Well, I'm looking at the notes that I'm on at the time. And if I just raise this top note and keep the other two, you see I went from there to there, that's the closest possible movement to an F major chord and the note that moved, moved upwards. So it's got an upwards sound to it. Now when you're doing this, you can just take as long as you need on the chord that you're on until you spot, until you find your landing for the next chord and then just lift and move when you're ready. At a later stage, you could perhaps do this with a metronome where you've, you're setting yourself four beats to find the next chord, and that's good for when you're doing a chord progression. But to start with, just do this out of time practice, okay? So we're on the F major, so next I might say, go up to a D minor. So for that, I would just need to change this finger to there. And I've got a D minor. Then I might say, down to a C major. So for this one, I need to change all three notes. So I'm going to move there. So I went from D minor there to C major. And then I might say down to a G major. So I've already, my thumb is already on the G. Move down there. I might say up to an E minor. Well, for this, I only have to move the top note there. 
and then I might say down to a D minor. Well, I can move the whole shape down from E to D because they're next door to each other, like that. And you can go on like that for as long as you like. Like I say, it's not the most creative thing to do in the world, but I find it really useful because it's more of a real world practical thing to do when you're actually playing chord progressions and you need to find these different positions quickly. It's a good training exercise. So that might be a bit tricky in the beginning, but stick with it because once you get your eye in, it's gonna be really, really useful for you. A quick tip is to always look for the root of the chord that you're going to next. So if I was on this G and I wanted to go to a C, I wanna make sure I look for the, the root of the chord closest by. So that would be the C nestled, um, nested in amongst the notes I've already got here. So I'm gonna use that one to find my, let's say I'm going down. I'm gonna use that one to find there. Let's say I wanted to go to an A minor next, up to an A minor. Well, I'm gonna look for the A nested in amongst these notes here, and then I can just switch that note, and that gives me this A second inversion shape. Now, I could have made the mistake of going up to a root position, but that wouldn't be the closest possible way. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing from there to there, but it's just not what we're practicing at the moment. We wanna have the control to move closely, and then we can decide if we want to make um, a, a bigger leap. We can decide that musically. So the final great thing about having the control to do this is that you might sometimes want to bring out a certain note on top. Let's say we had the chord progression A minor, F major to C major, but we wanted to bring these notes out on top. Well, we can do that if we choose the right positions to play them in. See, it sounds different. Every time you move differently, it sounds different. Or that might sound like this. Or it could be. Each of those is a different option that we can play with. So like I said, practice that in the key of C major first so you don't have any black notes to contend with. And then you do wanna have a go at other keys. So if you did this in the key of G major, we're gonna have a D major chord with an F sharp in it, and we're gonna have a B minor chord with the F sharp in it. So if you went from a G major down to a D major chord, you, you just have to watch out for those um, that F sharp and you make sure that you're kind of locking into the key whenever you do stuff like that. It would be easy to play the F by mistake, so you've got to practice sort of locking inside each key that you're working with as you go. Okay, so let's look at some common left hand things that you should practice for when we're playing two-handed chord rhythm patterns. So going beyond just playing single notes in the left hand, the next thing that is really useful to be able to find automatically is the octave of the note that you're playing in the left hand. So it's often the root of the chord. So if you were playing a D in the left hand, we want to be able to find the octave above kind of by feel really. So that's what we should practice, finding notes in our left hand with our fifth finger and finding the octave with our thumb. So D to D for example, or E flat to E flat, or G to G, whatever the right bass note for the chord you're on is. Now if you can't reach them, together at the moment, that's fine, because we can break them up, and that's often quite useful for when we're playing chord patterns anyway. So with an octave, we can do patterns like this. And you can see when you're using the pedal, you can let go of the lower one anyway. So using octaves in the left hand is really common. It helps us create a bigger sound and it gives us more to play with when we're creating patterns between the two hands. So the next thing is playing roots and fifths in the left hand. These are also really useful. So all you have to do is picture the root, basic root position chord. Let's say it's a B flat major chord. Remember, you should always have practiced the root position, the basic chord first anyway. So once you do know that, all you do is imagine that in the left hand and don't play the middle one. 
So you go for the chord that you recognize and don't play the middle note and you've got the root and the fifth. Or if it was an A major chord, we'd picture our A major shape in the left hand, but just play the outside two. So another quick top tip with finding fifths is that with two exceptions, they're always matching colors. So they're either two white notes or two black notes. If you just remember the two exceptions, we've got B flat to F, and then we've got B to F sharp. So they're the two exceptions. All the others are matching colors. And with a bit of practice, you'll just get used to the feel of that distance. So sometimes when we're playing chords in the left hand, we might just want to use a single note. Sometimes we might want to use octaves. Sometimes the root and the fifth. Sometimes the root, fifth, and octave. So obviously there's lots of other things we can do in the left hand as well, but if you can find those kinds of positions naturally, just by feel, once you've located the bottom note, then that is gonna put you in really good stead. But how should you practice those? Well, you just have to kind of be organized with what you're practicing and hit all 12 keys. So you can start off just by practicing them with the chords that you've already learned if you haven't learned all the major and minor chords yet. In fact, if you're just playing roots and fifths, it doesn't matter whether it's major or minor, it's gonna be the same thing in the left hand anyway, because it's the third that makes something major or minor. The third is the note that we left out of the chord, but we have to just try and be organized with how we practice. So there's a few suggestions for you. I'm gonna put these four groups of three up on the screen so you can write those down just to help you organize and practice three at a time. Or another way to practice is moving up in half steps. So you could go from C, from D flat, from D, from E flat, and so on. You could try doing them from the white keys and then the black keys. Or you could also try going round the circle of fifths. And they're just some ways that you can organize your practice to make sure that you hit all 12 keys. So it's good to have a variety of options for your left hand because with those different options comes different kinds of sounds that we create. Just as a very simple example, if I wanted to play a G major to C, and I chose octaves for the G in the left hand, I could either go down and play octaves on the C as well, or I could do that in a pattern. But I might decide that I don't want to go that low on the piano. I might want a, a heart to play a, in a higher range. So I could come up to this C, but my right hand wants to play this chord, so my left hand can't play there. But I don't want the left hand to sound too thin, so I want another note in my left hand, so the fifth is a really good choice then. Or you can do like rhythm notes or groove notes, I sometimes call them, in the left hand. just different choices that you can make depending on what you think suits the song that you're playing. Or I could use the fifth as well on the G just to create a bigger sound. Or another option for creating some kind of pattern. Musical creative practice on piano is really important. But if you're constantly getting stuck trying to find the notes you want when you're doing that, then you're not really getting in a decent practice session anyway. So with a bit of mindful, focused practice on getting comfortable finding some of the basic positions we use, then the more freedom you'll have to explore them musically when you come to do that. If you wanna learn more about the theory side, which will help with all of this, I've got some PDF guides available from the website and there's other videos on the channel as well you can look through. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.